Hello everyone and welcome to Quest, a journey into true crime and the paranormal. My name is Misty Gaither and I am like so excited to have with me in person, Bloody Mary, the voodoo queen of New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings, very nice to be here. I did a lot of research on you, you know, after we talked about the interview and, and you know, you being here and stuff. Right. And I only have to say I was only disappointed in one thing. <laughs> what? That you don't drink Bloody Marys. No, I don't. I, I used to drink vodka, but I don't drink it all anymore. Well, so, you know. Yeah. But that's not why I was, uh, you know, called that. But people right. always think that. But no, no. Well, we're going to get into that about, and I don't you know, drink blood name. either. But what? there's a different reason for the name that doesn't have anything really. Right. To do with blood, unless I mean, you get you know, your name comes from the the actual like the first Bloody Mary, I should say. The yes, Mary the first of England. Um, Queen Mary one, right? yes, Bloody Mary. There's a lateral bloodline connection, not a direct descendant, because she never had any children that survived. But correct, and that is the true reason why she was Bloody Mary. Oh, because she was always bloody. She never had a baby. She never stopped that. It was another reason why she was called that. But it's also because of the mirror thing. Mira being a portal to the other side, me being psychic and using, researching that name and that game, you know, since I was a kid. So, and my name is Mary. Well, there you go. <laughs> and that helps too. Yes. Kind of, you know, so everything again. It's stuck. It's stuck that way. So it became a pen name, became a TV name. It was just kind of a thing. And I named my tours that way, but it just rolled like like you were talking about your lineage lineage and everything mm -hmm. and how that it just comes you know like you know uh deep in catholicism but yet your grandmother was you know you, uh lived across the street uh from marie laveau well, and, marie laveau was yeah about catholic too yeah. so that was you know part of it here in fact in all the catholic areas where they met the slave trade there would be a combination of the religions so it wasn't just here, but especially here because we were 100% Catholic town. And my family's been here since 1718, so from the beginning. And my joke, you know, related to half the ghosts. I used to oh, say that, yeah. but then found out that it was true. So, <laughs> so there you go. Now, um, you know, I've, heard, I've, I've definitely heard of you, you know, like before. And then I really got to... Um, to see more of you and stuff when you were on Ghost Adventures. You were mm -hmm. on like three or four episodes there. Four it started those, off, yeah. yeah, like with the Magnolia Plantation. And, mm -hmm. and that was really, a, um, I really enjoyed that episode. But I really want to get into the episode where they toured your home. Right. And I've been taking people to do ghost hunts there before the show, you know, and since. So and recently, even though that was in 2013, I think, it was just two years ago that it got voted the top 10 scariest episodes out of all of them which just makes me laugh frankly but you know because they were scared yeah you could tell that they were and you know and then um uh Aaron was laying on the what do you call that what is it called like a sigil or something the thing that you drew in the on the ground oh, was he on the, he was on the vey -ve. okay the vey -ve is what it's called okay and and then you had the uh, books you know fly off the well, he shelf. had my skull henriette on his mm -hmm. chest so it was either the skull henriette or me that cursed him allegedly because he had nightmares for a year uh he was very very afraid at that time he every next few times he saw me he walked backwards but now now we're fine um <laughs> yeah i put him down in the vey -vey. i said you be good sit here and nick went wandering around the house uh, well the thing is i always put people in a protective way from the very beginning of what i do on my tours on everything so I open the gates, I address the spirits of place, uh, the Northeast, Southwest, all the rest. And I'm doing my thing, saying my thing, introducing these people to my house, which I'm now going to let them be in by themselves. And Nick in the background's going, and the malevolent ones too? It's like, <laughs> Jesus. You know, <laughs> you know it takes all kinds out there. Mm -hmm. And I am not one that would ever specifically seek out the malevolent ones, but I'm very aware and this is what people aren't aware of. They're always afraid, what about the dark ones? What about the evil ones? It's like, you know, you can't worry everywhere you go how many people are going to be dark or evil. You wouldn't go to a nightclub. You wouldn't go to a concert. You wouldn't go anywhere. I don't focus on that. I don't dwell on that. But I know there's a percentage that's always around you. As long as you hold your ground and know your place, you're absolutely fine. But when you start off with, I want the malevolent ones, it's like, mm -hmm. well, dude, then you got to deal with it. No, you know, <laughs> be careful what you wish for. Yeah, right? I mean, if that's what you want, that's what you get. And he's the one that got chased and books thrown at him and allegedly, quote unquote, attacked by a wild boar. Oh, 
You know, not that there aren't lots of wild boar historically all through Louisiana. It was a great hunting thing in the swamps. My house was in a swamp historically. I have lots of ghost animals in my house. I bet. And creatures from the between the worlds that have been, that have visited, but I have never encountered a wild boar. I had a ghost dog or two. I thought maybe the dog had attacked. Mm -hmm. But when he came back on his new show a couple of years ago, uh, Death Walker, Nick said, no, 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 it was a pig man. A pig man, okay. Like, okay, that's about... He said because it was at eye level. Yeah. Now, again, we've got the Lukaru and the Rugaru, which is not only a wolf because he's a changeling spirit. So, theoretically, why not? I guess he could turn into a wild boar. But I have never run into it, and I've run into a lot in that house. Well, I guess I forgot my book. I should have brought you my book. I'll bring you my book. <sighs> I wish Hauntings, you would have. horrors, and dancing with the dead. Mine is time for a plug. Yes, and you know <laughs> what? And what is so cool also, uh, not only the name of the book, uh, but it also has a review by Priscilla Presley. No, that's another book. That's another book. It's that's not a different the, book. That's the voodoo book. The voodoo book. Okay. Well, that's still cool because, <laughs> I mean, Priscilla Presley, I mean, that's... Dead. I'll have that's... to call her and ask her what she thinks of the one I'm talking on now. Yeah. I'll call her to the ghost box. That would be cool. Yeah. I'm going to call on Anne Rice, mm-hmm. um, Tennessee Williams, oh, okay. and Chris Owens to come to the haunted contest we're doing on the 13th as ghost judges. So we'll see if we get any answers from them on what the most haunted is at the museum par- paranormal party there. So, hey, you know, we call on spirits. We see them for other things. We might as well have them at a party, too. And, you know, I could really see Chris Owens judge, sure. you know, like doing it. I mean, she Absolutely. would enjoy that. You know, Absolutely. For real. You know, all of them would, I'm sure. She's been gone at least her proverbial year and a day that you need to wait. So she she can be invited to the party. Yeah, she, she would like that. Yeah, Maybe do a not? routine or and something. Tennessee like. Williams used to live like right behind my courtyard wall. Mm-hmm. And when there wasn't always walls, they would walk through. So in life, he was there and he's been spotted a few times, you know, when we do some of our ghost hunts and seances. So, And I'm going to ask Ruth Bader Ginsburg, too, because we need judges. We do. You know, so she was badass. I don't know if she liked anything about ghosts but <laughs> we're gonna find well, out i mean now she's got to at least acknowledge them right <laughs> well, i mean she's one of them so you gotta at least so i'm gonna invite her a special judge yeah <laughs> we can see a judge for a judge yeah yeah you know? um you know your home what i was going to ask you is in that area there um is where one of the victims or two of the victims like the last victims i'll get it together <laughs> something i'll continue on um of the axe man in that I, area. You know, I'm the only one that does that story mm-hmm. at the building. I have a great non-very scary story about it for you. So I have a display up for the axe man at the museum. I have an axe for him as well. Mm. Very, very generous. Because he never used his own anyway. He right. only stole that of the people's houses. So there was a um, a Sicilian grocery store in the corner because it was all Sicilians that, that got attacked. So many people thought it was the black hand, you know. So I was looking at the little map, and I say, oh, well, this one's kind of in route. If I'm going to come up two lane and zip around, I could drive by this one on my tour before we go to my house and do the ghost hunt. I said, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go do some research. So I decided to go inside to, you know, ask the people there if there was any residual energy, if there was any ghosts, you know, and I'm doing my due diligence. I walk in, and now it's a Spanish bodega, and none of them seem to speak English. So I was like, I'll still try. So I go in. There's a cop at the door, and he's thinking he's the London guard. You know, he's not breaking a smile or a sweat or moving and looking what's going on. So I am going up to the guy behind the counter, and I'm like, you know, is there any ghost activity here? And he's looking at me really funny, and I'm like, oh, jeez. Um, I said, you know, this is where there was murderer, you know, murderer. And then he was like, uh, axe man, you know, you know, axe man, like axe, you know, axe, axe man, <laughs> murder, <laughs> and phantoms, ghosts. I'm doing all this pantomime because he doesn't understand it. Right. There's a few people behind me in line, the cops at the door not paying attention. The guy's eyes are getting bigger and bigger. And I'm like, you know, ghosts. And I'm doing all this stuff. And I slid his throats. And, you know, guys just freaking the hell out. And finally, I'm just like, hey, whatever. You know, he had a great story to go home with. But no, I didn't get any information. So I don't think there's any ghosts there. But it was a good story. Well, you tried. And I was just thinking, like, if if I ever need a partner for, like, charades or something, (laughs) you know, you'd be my first one on the list. I was never big on charades, but I was really trying to get my point across, you know? Crazy white bitch, you know? (laughs) Well, I was just wondering, if do you think that, because I know at Richard Lael's home, you know, he has a lot of activity. Mm -hmm. And and even when I was there, we had some things move and, Mm -hmm. you know, stuff. And I know that you know, that you have things at, mm-hmm. at your home too. Do you think that that is just intertwined or is it just a... Intertwined a with what? With intertwined, like with 
like the area. You know how like an area can be haunted or what, or you just think it. Oh, we're all pretty stands. far. We're in a t- we're in a kind of different. Okay, area. the Even thing. Though it's okay, close in blocks. No, no, it's not nothing to do with that. Okay, probably right. more intertwined with the fact that we are psychically in sure. tuned and things are attracted to people that are. Now, my house came with ghosts. I mm-hmm. took my work home with me, like he would. And then I had a haunted collection, as does Richard, for I believe that he's taken most of his furnishings from place to place as he's moved around. So that has energy that comes with it as well. And he does psychic readings for a living. And when you deal with other people, you bring some of their stuff home with you. So I believe that some comes with the place, people that live there, and some comes with the things, and some comes with you. Yeah. Now, and, and a haunted house isn't static. Uh, it changes as the people change. You know, there was a drastic change from the time when I rented it from when I bought it. You wouldn't think that that would make much difference, but it did. It woke up a few extra ones. Hmm. When my son moved out and got married, it, it seemed like it changed. But that was around the same time I opened the museum that I took a lot of my haunted artifacts out and brought them there. So different things change. Other people around me, unfortunately, died. Uh, my mother, a few other friends that could add to the entourage so and sometimes they just simply don't want to talk to you sometimes they don't want to shut up you know so it's just a it's just a thing yeah well I was just going to ask that because you know I and of course it makes sense with y'all you know being psychic and and all you know all that that it would be in your home and then bringing things and from everything so you know that makes sense too and of course I was I have to admit I was kind of hoping just a little bit it had just a tad maybe to like the X Man too. I don't know. Oh, I, I mean, I, I don't know. It might certainly not my house. Right. Uh, maybe he, you know he's on the opposite corner. Yeah. Of it. He, he said yeah. um, when I had uh, talked to him about it, um, mm-hmm. and he he was also on my, on my show, and you know he he felt like some of some of the activity mm-hmm. could possibly be from him. You know, from the X Man too. But I really oh, it's possible. Yeah. I it's just kind of research. I'm the only one that ever talks about him over there, though. Right. Right. You know, nobody else knew it, or you know, through the generations and that neighborhood only psychic or person like him there that's kind of a a little bit of a tough block yeah. that he's on you know it's, it's it's a little tough yeah it's a lot of people for hire if you know what i mean <laughs> i love it <laughs> it's home though i love it right oh, off two lane there it's like eh. to quote you and it says my job is to help balance the light and dark mm-hmm. and to heal and teach the truth I try. I try to. I, I never try to convince anyone of anything. Present the facts to open the opportunity that there's more out there than just what you see, and that there's nothing wrong with that. You know, people are told they're crazy and stuff. Some kids when they're younger, or that it's evil, um, and and that's not what I want to teach. You know, I want to show that you, you can be a grounded, regular person, mother, family, and be able to deal with. The multiple worlds that surround us. We are not alone, and that's not only about aliens, multidimensional beings, other things all around, and what was still is. There's been a lot of old belief systems that tell you when we reconcile with our past and our ancestors, Mm. you know, communicate with them, listen to their advice, sort of, that we'll be a better people. And we need to be a better people. (laughs) <laughs> That's definitely uh, correct. Yeah. Now, you have a lot of um, several events coming up. Uh, oh, yeah. October the 13th, uh, Dalen Spratt's coming. And, yes. um, I'm for doing those a of... whole little mini weekend yeah. of my NOLA Paracon private ones that yeah. I do a lot with groups. So we're doing a lot of tours and ghost hunts and stuff. That's and then thir- the 13th, he's going to be one of the judges at the Most Haunted Contest which we're also doing a Hara doll making uh, wow. challenge. Mm-hmm. You can buy a doll, you know, have makeup and stuff there. Oops. And a zombie scavenger hunt. Oh, that sounds cool. Yeah, so you can come as your own zombie or take some tattered clothes and buy them and fix them up and, you know, we'll have prizes. Yeah, yeah. And ghosts. And ghosts, of course. Yeah. And for those of y'all, <laughs> I, I'm sure a lot of you do know, but for those of you who do not know, Dal- uh, Dalen Spratt, he's a uh, member of the Ghost Brothers. Right. And, and, you know, they've had like uh, three or four different seasons, different shows. Um, and I, I really enjoy, you know, their episodes that they did. And, and um, we did a YouTube together on my channel at Bloody Mary New Orleans. Right. When he came last year. And we planned then to try to do something more this year. Yeah. Which we're trying, which we're doing. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. It sounds like y'all going to be just chock full that whole weekend. Yeah, of the there's 13th. a lot of things. Um, but the 13th, 
from like come at noon. But listen, anybody out there that has their own haunted possession, their own private haunted thing, I want you to come enter. I need people to bring stuff. I don't keep them unless you want me to. Right. Uh, but I want we want to judge them. And you could either bring them early, so or at least let us know what it is, so we can put your name on the list to register. So we want to do a most haunted contest, and we're going to just use some different equipment on it, and also let the audience—it's free for everyone to come—let the audience vote as well. Okay, you know, and then if you want to participate in other things, you can buy one of the haunted dolls. I have a whole adoption clinic going on. Oh, do you now? Yes, all yes, right. I do. I have a secret attic upstairs with all kind of things. Everybody always wanted to buy my stuff that's in the museum part. And I do own the Haunted Museum and Mystic Institute downtown on Rampart. So I start getting some and nurturing and working with them. And some of them have spent their time in both my house as well as the Marie Laveau Cottage because I've rented that as well to do research while I'm writing my next books in there and making all kind of dolls because I make a lot of living voodoo dolls too. Nice. How about that? I do a lot of stuff. Yeah, it sounds like it does. Yeah. <laughs> Busy bee. <laughs> yeah, I love my city. Yeah, I love her spirits. Or, and, you know, I I love all, all the different spirits that are around. So I like to teach. Yeah. And like um, also... This Halloween, you're having Patty. Is that right? Patty Negri's coming yes. to town. We're just going to do a opening of the gates, quick opening ritual early. Mm-hmm. So you can go out and do what you're going to do on your own and not interfere right. with parties or things like that. So I think it's right at 5 o'clock. We're going to open the gates, salute the spirits and the invisibles that come in, and then the rest is up to you. you got to close gates at the end, you know. Well, I will try my best to be there for that. Uh, she's It'll been be a, a quick thing. Yeah, yeah it, she's been a guest on my show, and I just, you know, just really enjoy her her presence and and uh, very very amazing um, person. But you were on an episode in Ghost Adventures with Patty. Yes, the uh, opening of his museum. Exactly, and I really Actually, a little bit before it was open. Yeah, yeah. like was it twenty seventeen something? Now I've been there. Um, at the museum. It hadn't officially opened yet. He had a lot of red okay. tape to get through. Right. So that was whatever year it was opening. I, I went there in well, 2019. I opened a little bit before he did. So my haunted museum was at the 10-year anniversary of a very dark chapter in that building and our town, yes. Katrina. So Katrina was 2005 and 2006. So it was like 2006, I think, that, uh, right? No, and plus 10. 2016 that okay. I think I did his show. So there. Yeah, so the episode was probably, it aired, I think. A little, on after, Halloween. Yeah, yeah. That following yeah. Halloween. Right, yeah. right. So I, um, what happened, if you haven't seen the episode, is he had Bloody Mary, he had uh, Patty Negri, he had Lady Snake, and Sebastian. He had, and it gave you each. Um, different areas. Yep, like. different areas and different, um, maybe some uh, some of the haunted objects. And I really liked what you said, and I was like, it sounds like I a night. remember what I said. I'm going to tell you what you said. No. Okay, tell me what I said. <laughs> and it's, and it was oh, like, as I got mad at him about the dolls, but yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, this was before. This is when you, we first was getting started, and I was okay. like, oh, that sounds like a night on the town with me. You said, I need water, candles, and liquor. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and then he like uh, you wanted the snake, and and so it was really cool. I had a snake. Yeah. It, well, it was in a jar. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And so it was really cool how everybody had their own area, and you didn't know who was there or what was going on or whatever. I didn't know where they had put the other people. Right. I had seen. I had met sure. the other people, but we right. didn't know what we're doing. Right. We were supposed to do a seance, and then it backfired. Well, one of the poor persons couldn't get there, and Zach, Zach was not feeling well. It was, you know, just different things. Yeah, that was really. It's one of my favorite episodes because it was. Yeah, I, I really, I really enjoyed it you because. Watch it more. Yeah, you like, go go and do like a refresher. I don't, I don't, you know? I don't like watching myself. I mean, it's like yeah, you don't do it. nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Uh, you were laying down and did you know had the did you have a doll? Yeah, yeah, that was it. Which I, which, I, I, which I you told me was the devil, but it wasn't. Yes. You know. Yes. Was it the devil? Was it doll? Yeah. <laughs> Some people were disappointed. <laughs> like, it wasn't the devil. It wasn't so the sad. devil. Everything's got to be so dramatic. No, it wasn't the devil. Yeah. Um, no, I just really saw like the doll at a at a at a tea party playing with the little girls and people that were playing with her back then. And I said, "Oh, she wants a tea party," and he lost it. I'm not buying any gifts for <laughs> the devil. <laughs> you know, I was like, "It's like, well, I'm just telling you what I saw." You know, he's like, "That's evil." I was like, "Yeah, well, I sent him a damn tea set." Oh, you did? I said, I said, here, cheap. Uh, 
<laughs> right. I said, excuse me, I didn't say it in him. I said it to the dog. Yes. You know, <laughs> and he said, from what I hear, because they talk about me on the tours there, mm-hmm. you know, they said, well, Bloody Mary said this and I accepted it. And it's like, except now they say I'm dead. It's like, I'm not dead out there. Okay, people. Um, Lady Snake is dead. <gasps> she died. She died I did not about know this. a year and a half ago. I don't know how or anything like oh, that. Oh, wow. But somehow, because she died, everybody thought I died. Okay. Right? You know, and yeah. I had a call and I was like, would you tell your tour guides I'm not dead? You know? <laughs> um, but that was a thing for a while wow. that I had died. But no, she had died. And she and Patty Patty had problems. Yeah. These are the one they, they came into the room of, of. I don't know the... why they had such problems, but they, you know, I was off somewhere else. Right. I didn't have any problems with Lady Snake or, and I'd already. Patty had taken classes with me in California, and we had met before at that mm-hmm. show, right? Um, yeah, so I don't know why <laughs> they had such. They had like like they were uh, having a like two cowboys or something when, in she, that she scene. She jumped, yeah. And she's like, "Okay, don't go in that car with her." You know, at the end when I was going home, I didn't know. And she's like, "Come in the limo with me. Come in the limo with me. I don't want to be with her." And I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> Better okay. tell me twice, get in the limo. Yeah, whatever. I said, I, I don't care, you know. But yeah, it was an interesting night. There were some issues, I think, that uh, a few people had in different areas. I didn't have an issue with the doll. I had an issue with Zach being mean to the doll. Right. And I, I remember saying later, I was like, are, are you mad that I talk back to you? Because, oh, hell no. You know, like, if that's what you feel, that's what you feel, you know. I was like, but I love dolls. I have so many dolls. My family does not like dolls anymore because I have so many dolls. I have a lot of them that I have nurtured their spirits. And so I do have this little secret haunted attic that I want people to adopt. And I also now starting a campaign that, you know, get your doll a doll. Your doll wants a doll. (laughs) I like that. You have a campaign. Get your doll a doll. Get your doll a doll. I'm also an advocate for spirit rights. You can write that down. Right. Um, And, yeah. (laughs) And, you know, by the way, it it does not have to be a doll for this haunted contest. Okay. You know, that just happened to have a lot of pictures Mm -hmm. of a lot of haunted dolls. And I have a lot of them. But it could be anything. Anything can be haunted. Anything can be that connection. One of my... One of my biggest hauntings is a uh, wheelchair from Charity Hospital. Now, yeah, you know, that, that would comes be. comes with a lot of spirits, not just one, because it's a very old, old mm-hmm. wheelchair. You know, so there's that. And then there's this thing about an oven I've got. Let's talk about, you know, let's that, talk that, about. That, talk about the ultimate of haunted items. Yeah, yeah. You know, because uh, that's got, that's like a relic. It has a blood print. It has literally something in it and you know when you're looking out or you're thinking you've got haunted artifacts and something's going on in your house and you're looking around your house bro or the last place you're gonna think is oh yeah it's the up by the way yeah uh, you know you're gonna look at the this and that but no you know it is definitely now they came just so everyone knows we got blamed for this they came with the apartment you know 10 years of tenants lived up there and cooked and ate out of the refrigerator and oven that there was the tragic murder suicide of Addie Hall in. Um, I had not cooked in it or turned him back on. Yeah. But they become memorials. <clears throat> but they came with the apartment, just so people know. All right. Now let me ask you this. Um, do you get some flack from that? Oh, I got a lot of flack about a year after I opened. I don't mm-hmm. know why. You know, it was actually another tour guide. There was a back reason for it too. But there's a lot of their friends in town that they drank and did drugs with mm-hmm. that you know are still very distraught over the murder suicide. I don't believe it could happen. And what, the problem is, I counsel a lot of people for suicides before, after, and after. Mm-hmm. You know, right. and all the friends feel it was their responsibility. They should have known. They could have done something. They had to stop it. So they get very aggravated when anything else is up there. Some of them still believe it's innocent when it was really a shut and you know, a pretty obvious case on what had happened. So, um, yeah, there were a few of his drinking buddies that were still around. However, on the other hand, I've talked to many people that he served in the war with that have come and we've helped console and that's helped calm Zach down. I've spoken to best friends of Addie when they were in high school and people that have worked with her that we've gotten along very well with. Some of the people that actually are in there to help those spirits heal uh, get along with very well. There's a few, you know, more local people that were in that time that probably 
are very destroyed still over what happened and kind of feel responsible. And they have to, just like the spirits both had to face what went on. Addie didn't believe that he did this to her. Addie didn't want to, you know, she was like in the moment of death when I first got there, which was the 10-year anniversary of this event. Some of the most active times are anniversaries and, um, you know, things like that, renovations. Oh, it yeah. It was both. You yeah. know, we had a fire and I was redoing the place. And it was the 10-year anniversary. It was like it was happening right in front. Again, right over and over again. But, you know, it's not the Zach and Addie Museum. And right. you would be very hard-pressed to find a building in New Orleans that there hasn't been a murder or suicide in in the French Quarter. In old buildings like that, you know? Yeah, because I actually got to thinking about it. Some people, I'm not saying, you know, just with you, but just like in general, you know, like places of death and then, you know, like have tours or, or whatever. And, and then, you know, well, they're making money off of it. And to me, it's really not that much of a difference of having an open home, you know, like home and doing tours and, you know, and then the people who have still haunted have to maintain homes. the building. Right. You still I, have to. Is it, is it like intent? You know, like if, I think if you're in, your intent is mm -hmm. to do it in a, in a way, you know. I mean, first of all, to rebuild that building was a fortune. Sure. And I'm never going to probably recoup all of that. Mm -hmm. Old buildings take a lot of maintenance, a lot of maintenance, yeah. you know stairways and things like that. So there's all sorts of historic buildings all over the world mm -hmm. that people tour through that are very difficult. But you have to maintain these buildings and the history. And um, a lot of, as you know, a lot of ghost stories started off with a murder. That very true. Not all of them. No. Because I try to tell people, you don't have to die in a place to haunt it. It could be a place you loved. It could be a place, you know, where lots of things good happened as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a murder person or a serial killer person or anything like that. This was something I stumbled into for a very different reason than most people think. I knew that there'd be problems with jealousy, which, mm -hmm. of course, there always has been with me with other tour companies. There'd be a problem with that. And there'd be a problem because of what it was. But it was haunted before. It was... You know, the Zach and Addie murder house, you know, and they are just a long line of spirits that are there. I have at least 16, 17 spirits that we've that are more regulars and then a ton of stuff that comes with the haunted artifacts themselves. But what are you going to ignore Zach and Addie? Pretend like they're not there. You know, they right. need they're the ones that need the help, not the other ones. Addie's done a lot of growth and she's gone. more. She's back and forth, but she's mainly gone. Uh, more than stuck there like she was when I first got there. He still has a lot more karma to deal with, and we're trying to help him through that. But he had a recent visit from a friend that he started the war with and had to sit there and listen to hours of war stories. Oh, wow. Well, it wasn't my thing, but well, I did no, it well, because he needed it. Right. I needed to hear it. Made him feel that he wasn't alone. In fact, anytime we have army or, or military up there, it comforts him. I always know it's going to be an interesting night when some, you know, depending on who's visiting. And I think it's really cool, you know, because, um, you know, helping and a lot of people, they don't think of that. They just think of the negative or, you know, right, I try to right. come up. And so to, to give them some, you know, like you said, counsel and some peace. And, and It's like your friend. You know, you yeah. to go to the bar, have a drink, talk about what happened, you know. Yeah. I mean, it just wasn't the time for that to work. Yeah. You went to the bar and all you heard of was more problems, more yeah. problems, and right. anger was everywhere, and the crime rate was up. I mean, it was just insane, and everybody went Katrina crazy or a form of PTSD, and then there were drugs involved, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. So you got all that added together, you know, and there right. wasn't a lot of it. There wasn't a lot of laughter. There wasn't a lot of fun going on no, the year after Katrina still. So right. all that is with it. But, you know, the trend seems to be going to jails, you know, yeah, where there's yeah. tons of murderers and things up there. There's not any individual counseling or help. The trend is old asylums, jails, and things like that. I, I do prefer, and many people agree, that the smaller places will get you more close and personal to the ghosts than huge places that you have to wander to find the right ones. But, you know, uh, as I said, to be hard-pressed to find a place that hasn't had maybe a murder or a suicide in it in New Orleans, but, you know, their story is an important story. It's a cautionary tale. It'll always be part of the story of Katrina, too. They like the last two Katrina victims. Yeah, you're um, right. Yeah. So it's a, it's a sad story. It is. You know, but there is some hope. 
that is there. And he's come, that last visit from the friend that he served with, you know, a couple of steps forward, you know, so that's good. Time isn't the same. Yeah, right. You know, You're right. so it's not like it's been that long. It has and hasn't, you mm-hmm. know, not in their eyes. The anniversary is going to be next week. Yeah. I'll be having a sunset night. I always bring him a meal, give him gifts and do things. And, but we do that quite a lot as well. But October 5th is their date. I'm having, I don't, I used to have a monthly meeting about paranormal experiences that people want to talk and get counsel with or help with or t- just hear stories. So I'll be having one, I think, that day, that afternoon. That's and then great. it goes to that night. But I, I have ghost hunts almost every day. Oh. And y'all got to come. I would love locals to. You know I'm all about yet. that. Yeah, locals yeah. Don't, don't come as often as tourists do, you know. It's a prop, something's in your backyard. You don't always do it. What? Well, try to get And you get definitely have to be there for the paranormal party. Oh, I'm definitely going to be there. And, you know, y'all out there and, and, and come. And then maybe you'll get to, uh, I don't know about C, maybe probably, or you Tennessee Williams. Ride. Well, they could at least win a prize, yeah. you know. We're going to try to talk to them on the ghost box. I know. That'd so you'll cool. get to experience a little, little mini part of the ghost hunt like that as we're judging judging the items. But, I mean, I have a seance that I do regularly every weekend. Mm-hmm. I do a half seance, half ghost hunt. Because you said you believe in the same thing as me. I've been preaching for 30 years that you are your best paranormal instrument. Yeah, right. Not to necessarily be dependent on every gadget. You have to tune up your own and you don't need batteries you know mm-hmm. and batteries run out all the time they do <laughs> i appreciate oh, by the it. way feed the dead bring them a gift be yeah. nice I always bring a, sometimes to do a toast to the ghost oh. bring them food bring them money the dead are hungry they like gumbo let's do it <laughs> oh thank you so much it's, uh, um oh, bloody mary new orleans.com yes come to my events and the museum's open every day at noon and after hours events every night come to the costume contest and um on the 13th and on the 31st come see uh bloody mary and uh, patty negri and also you know you do tours and yeah. all the time i mean you just i do ghost hunts in three different locations my personal house down and uh, several different buildings downtown the french quarter old buildings okay. with all kinds of uh spirits and we are the only ones in the building i do not Say it's a ghost hunt while you're walking down the street or at a crowded hotel or that when there's mm-hmm. noises that can be from anywhere all around you. We try to limit that right. as much as possible so the evidence we could get, because it's only evidence, you can never say it's totally proof. It's your experience that counts, though. It's your understanding and opening. And I just want you to be open and see what happens. <sighs> All right. Thank you so much for being on the show. I really enjoyed talking with you. And everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. And I will see you next week. Good night.